everybody. You're listening to What Are You Doing in Denmark, the podcast that helps you make Denmark make sense. My name is Derek Hartman, and I'm joined around the table by the beautiful Brooke Black. Hello! And our hilarious friend, Conrad Molden. Thanks for having me. And we are going to be breaking down the latest news in Denmark. Now, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, oh, what, November 5th, then we're letting you know that this is the only news you need to worry about today. <laughs> Nothing else is happening that you could even possibly worry about anywhere else oh in the world. Oh, my God. We're just going to talk about the Danish news today, and that's it. <laughs> so a lot going on in Denmark. Where should we start? Well, just on that note, uh, I just read that 88% of Danes would vote for Kamala because they are voting for freedom of democracy, which okay. I just wish that was what it was in the U.S. That's, mm. that's all. Yes. <laughs> Let's yes. see how it goes. We, yeah, we'll see. All yeah. of my friends look very tense uh, uh, on the internet. There's a lot of uh, inspirational memes and like <laughs> people are just, I can tell there's some desperation. <laughs> just looking there. up rainbows and unicorns <laughs> and memes and sending each other any kind of distraction. Oh. Everyone in the office has that picture of that cat that's hanging on. Yeah. It's yes. just hanging there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the mood. Yeah. And hopefully we can get by with. Uh, some distracting yeah. uh, mm. news of, uh, of Let's talk Ireland, about the news of Denmark. Of our land. Know, instead. <laughs> Talking of distractions, Denmark has unveiled their new supercomputer. Oh, I dun, heard dun, about dun. this. I, mm-hmm. I, all I know is the headline and uh, Kong Frederick in front of it. <laughs> the picture is really, really cool. <laughs> it's something to do with uh, AI, is that right? So it's called Gephion. I hope I'm pronouncing that okay. correctly. And it's, You're not uh, saying that right. Gephion. <laughs> Gephion. Gephion. Move your tongue. It's probably more hoogly, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no. Gephion. No. And it's a very, very powerful supercomputer. I'm saying this like I understand what a supercomputer is. <laughs> Uh, but it's uh, heavily funded, so it's Novo Nordisk Foundation has thrown 600 million crowns at mm. it, and uh, Denmark Danish government's Export Investment Fund has thrown an additional 100 million at it, and that was just to polish it and make it look really, really nice. Um, and it's the one of the world's most advanced supercomputers, and it's been designed to tackle complex optimization using AI. That just wow. sounds like a lot of... I don't understand. <laughs> what yeah. does it mean, it complex really sounds- optimization? <laughs> Well, what um, is it? I like somebody right? typed in ChatGPT, like, what do you want? And then yeah. it spit out this description <laughs> yeah. using ChatGPT. It, it, it was probably the supercomputer that did it. What do you do? <laughs> I tackle complex optimization. I mean, we use it. At, we use ChatGPT at home to do ghost stories about a ghost butt for my kids. Oh, <laughs> it's like yeah. chapter. It's almost like Benicula. Like, oh, nobody knows that reference, but it's a vampire bunny that sucks the juice out of vegetables. It's a book that I grew up with in the, stu- in the U.S., but I realize it might be regional if you don't know about it. I, I was not tricked into eating vegetables that way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what we use ChatGPT for is um, a, an ongoing <laughs> chapter series about a ghost butt. But go on, supercomputer, will we have... <laughs> well, this one, it probably can do also amazing ghost stories, Yeah, hopefully, since it's so very complicated. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I read both the Consulate General of Denmark's website, which talks about it, and I read the Novo Nordisk fa- funding of it. And the language is very chat GPT. <laughs> Oh and what I really wanted was a bit where, it, you know, you know, in some Wikipedias, you can just put simple English. Yeah. I just wanted to be like, is there a keyboard on the computer? And can you type stuff into the computer? Because yeah. I'm just imagining, you know, what do you, it's sitting there. You're like, hey. I'm just picturing Oz and the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. It's like ch- pulling on some t- like <laughs> yeah. pulleys and like. You probably turn up and you have to boot it up. It's like got Windows XP. <laughs> so I want to use it tomorrow, so I'll start it now. You know, that kind of vibe. <laughs> Microsoft 95. Yeah. Just, everything all just new again. Yeah, I'm wondering if they just call it supercomputer. You know, I think Dane's really like, oh, super, super. I wonder if maybe they're mega just, computer. Oh, it's a super com- it's a mega, mega computer. computer. Mm. Yeah, maybe it does it's feel just... like them. I mean, it seems to be very, very complicated. Not exactly sure what they will use it for, mm. but I would love to have a go. Go down there, ask it some questions. Yeah, but so you don't know from reading if you enter stuff in. And you took a deep dive. (laughs) I read read content optimization, (laughs) content optimization. (laughs) But what content and what are we optimizing for? Exactly. But it says it uses uh, totally renewable energy to power it. Cool. Which is that's good. That's good. And uh, that's about as far as I understood exactly what it does. <laughs> okay. Well, more to come on that. Come. <laughs> 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 I guess when Novo Nordisk has all this Ozempic money, they're just going to dump it into the next big thing, which would be AI, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's taking exciting. all the creative jobs. I'm not going to go there. I know that yeah. that's, that's, there's 
reasons not to be afraid and reasons to be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially if you have a creative job as a creator, is yeah. that that was uh, something you were talking about? Yes. Right. Yeah. There? So I was reading this morning um, about the Marketing Act. So now um, that's basically it's uh, influencers in Denmark. There's already a lot of rules and regulations around um, anything that could be considered an ad. So mm-hmm. you have to put reclaim or ad or inv- invitare it or things like that. There was an issue last maybe a few weeks ago with Lily Collins and Louis Polson where she was in a Louis Polson store. And she was, you know, doing a very cute Lily Collins thing and and saying it lights up her world, but there was nothing that said ad. So people, I I guess the people that are in charge of the Marketing Act were asking, hey, this looks like a collaboration. Is this paid? And Mm. I don't think they responded, either Louis Polson or Lily Collins. But Lily Collins did change her Instagram to say it was an ad and Louis Polson didn't. And so now there's all these new regulations that uh, influencers are upset about, which is... uh, you know, not just paid collaborations, but let's say you're at Tivoli just on your own with friends, that is still considered something that would be an ad because you're at a space um, that is, uh, you know, uh, you're promoting something, which I think is, uh, there's a lot of gray area that's really tricky. So it, influencers are saying, what can I post if I am if I can't just live my real life? Um, there's too many gray areas if you include that. So 120 of them have petitioned Business Minister Morton Busco, uh, where they're expressing concern about the way this law is being interpreted. Hmm. They're going to meet on it November 25th, I believe, because there's arguments saying, well, you could have a private Instagram and do your fun stuff there, but then that would still be supporting their public persona, which then you would need to have an ad. Uh, you know, it just, yeah. the layers and the levels get mm. really tricky. And there was also a part about uh, influencing young people uh, where a part of the act saying you shouldn't be doing anything that influences younger people poorly. So influencers are saying, can we not even have a casual glass of wine? Is that a bad influence? So I understand both sides. It's like we are trying to control this thing that is designed to keep our attention and influencers have become so big in the U.S. They're very loose about whether or not something is an ad. Um, And I think that I think influencers are really trying to do that here um, where they're trying to play by the rules. Dane's like rules, I think. They're good at following rules, much better than the U.S. Sure, but sometimes there's a danger in making up rules before you actually know what... The, I, I sometimes feel like rules are rolled out here in Denmark uh, almost as if it's a solution in search of a problem. Yeah. If you follow me, where it's yeah. like, oh, uh, you know, Lily Collins did this one thing, so now we need to just make mm. a rule for everybody. Yeah. And sometimes you need to have this debate before you implement a, a, yeah. or create mm. a law. And I, I feel like that's what happened. I think mm. I read that they are working with select influencers on individual cases in the mm. meantime as they try to figure it out and they acknowledge that they're not going to get it right uh, out of the gate. So that's yeah. good. That's kind of, you know, we're, it sounds like they're willing to work on uh, this together, but. But it is um, an interesting, tricky situation yeah. because you don't want to. You want to know if you're being paid to sure to I shill so something too. or whatever. But I, I had an example where, and, and actually, we should we should clarify too. That's why Annie isn't with us this week. She's actually in court. Uh, just kidding. Oh my god, <laughs> you kidding. scared me so much. Because <laughs> no. that's just kidding. so free, scary to free me. Free I don't want to break the Annie. rules here. <laughs> I don't want to break the rules here. I'm, I'm terrified to break the rules here. <laughs> we love you, Annie. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> No, I, I've I've had a, a situation where uh, over the summer I was in Paris for the Olympics and I went to the Denmark House, the Danish Pavilion, or, or something like that. Uh, I forget what it's it's called exactly, but I did a reel there and I was not working with any tourism board visit Denmark, nothing. I was just there on my own, and it was something that I wanted to share with my audience, my community, and I do. In other instances, I've done uh, sponsored posts and paid collaborations, but this was not that, and. I posted it and I tagged the was it Danish go visit pavilion. Denmark? I think I may have tagged Go Visit Denmark, who sponsored the pavilion uh-huh. or was basically the Danish outreach in Paris for the 2024 Olympics. Because I added them as a collaborator or tagged them, I don't remember exactly how I did it. Instagram said, This looks like a paid collaboration. Verify that it's not. And I was oh, like, Instagram, Instagram did. did. So I wow. feel like the I feel like there is due diligence done by the social media companies. And I know that the there the government agency in the US that regulates Facebook meta uh, does require you to have Reclaima. I mean, that's where all that comes from. So I generally just Google that. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. if I'm unsure, okay, I was invited into this event and I'm posting something about it. Uh, I did not pay for tickets and some people did, then I will use that hashtag that it, it 
requires right. me to do. I don't think I would go into Louis Poulsen and if I'm getting something, I think Lily Collins should have known that if she's getting something right. in exchange I'm surprised, for that exposure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that she wouldn't know that. If I know that. <laughs> yeah. It just seems a bit tricky to me because where is the line on an influence as well? Mm. Like if your friend is, even right. it, it, not even online, but if your friend recommends to you, hey, have you tried this product? I mean, not like, hey, have you tried this <laughs> brand of Halgrun? It's very delicious. Like, But if, if somebody tells you about something, yeah, and they're not being paid for it, that's one thing. But it's the same. If I see something online, I genuinely, honestly, I'm not really bothered whether or not they got paid. I get the legal implications of that, but I'm not really bothered. It's up to me to choose whether or not I want to go to Tivoli. <laughs> or eat this thing or go or take, to Paris, you know? Or take a picture of your food. I mean, our restaurant's going to walk around and be like, uh, 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 don't take a picture of that main course uh, yeah. because uh, we need to see how you tag it yeah. so we don't get in trouble. Yeah, I mean, This just seems like a little bit of government overreach. And I'm not a libertarian, but this seems, uh, <laughs> yeah. seems a little bit extreme. Maybe we'll do an update after the 25th of November and <laughs> see if they're like, never mind. Or yeah. if they're like... I get, I get where they're coming from. But yeah, I, it's a little bit frustrating because I, I sometimes feel like I have have to clarify this is not a sponsored th th this is not sponsored i want to help out the people who are consuming my content to let yeah. you know about these apps that i use yeah. in denmark that you may not know about uh, do you ever have followers tell you like hey this this should be marked as an ad or oh sometimes and i think that they're doing it in sort of you know that um that way of uh nitpicking gatekeeping that that way of trying to be like oh this is actually supposed to be and i'm like well i didn't get paid so i don't need to do that mm -hmm. i'm letting people know that this is a brand i really like i'm letting people know that um hey these are the things you should uh, look into purchasing if you're going to move here. You probably need a waterproof backpack. That's not something I needed in the U.S., but I need here because I'm outside a lot more and it rains a bit more. So like things like that. Oh, this is a brand I like. And I'll have people sometimes contact me and say, what was that that you mentioned? Uh, what was that brand or that type of bag? And I'll tell them, but I'm not sponsored by anything. So I don't know. Where I does had, that line come yeah, in? Yeah, I had someone, I'd put like Inviterate in the like hashtag at the mm. end, but not at the beginning. And huh. so someone was like, hey, I don't want to be a Karen, but like you could get in trouble if you don't say it. And I'm like, okay, I have to move it to the front. Like, yeah. I, you know, because I didn't, I wasn't trying to hide it, but uh, oh, like in but a I series thought like in like the copy, it was, series. no, it was in my, it was like a regular grid post and, uh, and it was just at the end instead of the beginning. And oh. I guess people don't read that far. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so you have to start the caption with. Yeah, with I guess so. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. realize that. I don't so, think I've done that. <laughs> so I was like, sorry, <laughs> I'll make it more prominent. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, I think people are trying to help. And, oh, I, I definitely and, like, think they don't want you to get in trouble. It's usually like that. Sometimes I'll, I'll I've also had other like creators say that and I'm not sure that their tone was always <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was my news. That was yeah. my uh, my latest. There were a lot of other kind of more grim things out there, but I thought this was uh, an okay one to talk oh, yeah. about for my mental health. <laughs> There's a lot of grim. Uh... <laughs> that is what the news is. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of not a bunnies lot, and kittens. A lot of grim. Yeah. Well, one thing that could help your mental health could be could be some drugs, but also <laughs> <laughs> could but be some drugs. How about that transition? <laughs> <laughs> I applaud. And, and this I is applaud. not sponsored by by any by any types of drugs. <laughs> just just for the record. Uh, but the Department of Forensic Medicine out of Aarhus University will be testing the wastewater along uh, co cooperation with the Danish health authorities. Uh, this project will test wastewater from six cities, Copenhagen, Nesve, Onsa, Espea, Aarhus, and Albo. So the initiative is basically to determine the levels of commonly used illegal street drugs mm -hmm. in wastewater. Pink cocaine. Uh, it, uh, such as cocaine, such as amphetamines, opioids. Um, but does it even show up in water? Isn't it mm. like, really? That yeah. was, it was uh, really popular in the Netherlands. They yeah. did that. They started testing all the wastewater coming out of some of the big cities. I thought you meant like putting drugs in the water was really oh, popular. Oh, no, no, no. They're putting so, drugs in their mouths and real... nostrils, <laughs> yeah. and then it goes into wastewater. <laughs> well, you seem to know a lot about how to ingest mm -hmm. these drugs. Yeah. yeah. Not sponsored. This is not <laughs> sponsored. I wonder if you could extract it from the wastewater as a cheaper way to... Oh, yeah, source, like put it through or... a cheesecloth yeah, and then sell yes. it again. That it's seems very like People's Dutch. toilet matter. I was... <laughs> 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 Toilet, toilet matter. matter. There seems to be I some toilet matter on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> 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 on this rolled up $100 bill. I'm just too proper and prim coming from America, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you won't say poop. <laughs> Is it because you don't want to do drugs that's been mixed with poo? Well, that's what are you, the queen of England? <laughs> <laughs> I think if it's on discount, right? Yeah. So like, why is this cocaine slightly cheaper? Well, not uh, the pink it, cocaine, I want the brown cocaine. It came from a butt. <laughs> 
that <laughs> came from a butt. I mean, yeah. there's so many things that we handle that come from butts. <laughs> like money. <laughs> what are you handling? Wait, what's going on over but, there? But like, think what's about, butt? you know, the, the common, how you get pink eye, the, oh. the like, you touch your butt. Is that true? <laughs> oh, how you get pink I eye. I asked the doctor and apparently it's not true that the, like, if you, but it's like, I've heard it's that. spreading infection, right? But think about like how gross, not that I've ever held cash in the time I've been in Denmark because mm. everything is yeah. so easy to pay with your phone, but mm. Like there's always like bits of fecal matter on your mm. money and yeah. like other things that we touch. So it's everywhere. Maybe there's some drugs in there. Ah, so. That's true. Maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe the drugs are with us the whole time. The drugs yeah. are always with us. I was speaking of uplifting topics and periods of history. During the COVID times, they were testing the wastewater mm. to see the levels of undetected COVID cases. I'm not sure how they could figure that out from the wastewater, but I... I'm wondering if this is maybe just this. They're like, well, we still have all of this shit water. What do we do with it? But also, I'm missing the the plot here. Why are they testing it just to see how many drugs are coming through people in Denmark? Yeah. Mm. So they think that the to, the to what end? Yeah. Well, the rear end <laughs> <laughs> mostly, but I guess I guess the front and the back. <laughs> mm. uh, we're human being so childish. <laughs> it's, a, it's a human centipede moment. Oh. Yes. I guess they think that uh, by doing this testing, the data will enhance the understanding of substance abuse in Danish society. And okay. uh, before this, they were just relying on on self reported surveys. Mm. And uh, that's um, unreliable at best. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, yes. Brooke? <laughs> <laughs> Not you're today. Ve- you're very alert this morning. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> iced coffee. <laughs> yes, I love coffee. Um, yeah, so they think that monitoring this will detect trends in drug use in Denmark and provide valuable information to public health efforts. TBD on what that might be, but... Okay, yeah. and it's from Aarhus University. Yes, okay. yeah, and in those six cities. And I guess that's, uh, that that leaves about 1.2 million residents in the cities uh, that will be secretly drug tested Okay, <laughs> through their waste. Through their... and Yeah, I wonder how they chose the cities, too, just populous areas, mm, I guess. I they guess, kind of did yeah. the span of... Probably you know. easy to get a fishing net in the sewers. <laughs> What did we catch today? <laughs> but is that really the most efficient way to find out if drugs are coming in? Like, I, I don't know how expensive it would be. Maybe it's not expensive. I Maybe guess, it's really easy to do. I mean, look, if the alternative was just asking people, <laughs> right? do you do but drugs? But is that the only alternative? Is there? Otherwise, you have to catch all the drugs going in. Yeah. And I think mm. we're, we're not mail, very good at that. With the uh, <laughs> airdrops. Massive trucks from Germany. Trucks, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually have a friend who met his uh, girlfriend, now wife, uh, working in a sewer in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. You're friends with the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Michelangelo. This is his name, Michelangelo. <laughs> his name is Michelangelo. <laughs> and he was trained by a, a little rat. Did they um, meet under the, the It ground? was love at first shite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but the stories he told... You were waiting uh, to tell that Yeah, that, that was what... You teed it up. Did you get that from a supercomputer? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thank Even you, though he doesn't computer. know if he can type something in or not. Like, how yeah. do I ask questions? You just whisper to the supercomputer. Like, it I, just I need no, a sewer no, it joke. connects with your brain. It doesn't. There's no like. Oh, yeah, it's just a mind meld. Of course, that's what makes it super. But the stories he told about it was he, he, he was like I'm, obviously it depends on the different areas of the sewer. But there are ones where you're literally on a boat sailing down the sewer. Oh, yeah. I mean, not, not not like a frigate, but oh. you're on like a slightly larger than like a okay, a, like a in kayak, Venice. like River in Venice, slime, mm. like a gondola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Willy Wonka <laughs> meets Venice oh. meets a sewer. Oh, that. That sounds that sounds actually kind of cozy. Yeah. Like a go boat collaboration. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> can you imagine they're like, hey, can I there's a discount like, on Go Boat today? It like, goes into this like, tunnel. Yeah, into this. In my mind, I'm picturing Sisternina, so it's a lovely experience where I'm on a boat and there's art and there's art. There's uh, art. What and, beautiful and cave beautiful paintings. sounds, yes. <laughs> yeah, I would take that ride. Why not? Actually, they could do a sponsorship where it's go boat, but then uh, you have to collect samples. Oh, right. Yeah, pa- yeah like that Copen right. Pay thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. So they're like, here's some jars and some fishing nets oh and some God. gloves. Get the kids to do it. Green kayak. <laughs> Actually, we're just dropping all yeah. of it. The- none of this is sponsored. Do not <laughs> Lily Collins <laughs> us. <laughs> These are all great ideas. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. he did tell me that when he, him and his girlfriend would uh, finish work, obviously they have a, a very powerful shower that they have to go through, even though they're wearing like biohazard equipment. And he said, and then they would get home, and then sometimes they would still shower once or twice more. I believe it. Because oh, yeah. it gets in your skin. Yeah, oh, yeah. because of the... Ri- but that's just that kind of... Can you imagine sitting on the sofa and being like, sorry, I, you need to go for another shower? Because <laughs> oh. it's been a long day in the sewers. 
Um, I feel like it would get into your own nose, and then mm. would you know if you were smelling? Yeah, you know, then you, you know, like, like it's we tune it out, like whatever the bad smell is, and then it's like you get used to it. Yeah. Why I, people can't smell their own body odor and things? Yeah, but somebody's got to be down there collecting all these samples. Just one person. Yes, and SBO and like, yeah. you know, yeah. Mess and Odense. <laughs> like just one person in each. Mess and Odense. <laughs> he lives by himself on like in an l- abandoned lighthouse because nobody will be near him. <laughs> these stinky guys, thanks to these guys, we now know more about cocaine use <laughs> in Denmark. <laughs> That's really sad. Sorry, it could be women as well. Oh, I true. I don't want yes, to yeah. say guys. Could Everybody's be just seen her with her fishing net and a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> just wishing she was on a little bit of cocaine and make the day yeah. go faster. <laughs> so we'll we'll see exactly what happens with that. There's also a, a little story about bike thievery. Ooh, oh. yeah. So oh, yeah. Um, there's another another new initiative. This is actually a law that was actually announced last year, but is starting to be implemented. Where police now have the ability to stop cyclists if they have. Any suspicion of theft, which mm. I feel like in in Copenhagen is just any bicycle. <laughs> how would you suspect? Ah, uh, you can sometimes tell. Wait, wait, it's it's a drunk guy on a woman's bike at three o'clock in the morning. Are you gendering bicycles now? Yeah, of course there are. Okay. Fit, there, you know the ones. No, that there I mean, are right? ones that are fit for yeah. different sized people. I guess. Yeah, I right. would have no different idea. shape bodies. Maybe it would have to be super obvious to me. I'm just picturing like a boot on the tire. <laughs> so in in, in uh, 2023, there were over 48,000 reported bicycle thefts in Denmark. Which For, wait, so 48,000 over 48,000 in all of Denmark. In all of Denmark. In, in one year. In one year. Yeah, that was in, that was last year. And okay. for reference, that was up in 2021. There were 38,000. Oh wow! Yeah. And Whoa. about half of those are in Copenhagen municipality. But it's also about reporting. I've had so many bikes stolen. I just, why would you report it? Yeah, that's the same thing. I, I, what are you gonna, they just I laugh at you. So, well, and sometimes I'm like, did I just forget where I parked? Was Did I have a few mm. too many? <laughs> but also, beer, not remember? it doesn't seem to change. I could be totally wrong, but when I drop my kid off at Bernahill, there's people that just leave the bike. Like they don't even yeah. lock it or there's like a mm. computer in there or a child in there. And it's like I'm, I'm like, but this is <laughs> they, 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 they just leave seem their other. They're just walking off, and you're like, "Is that your baby?" It the- doesn't seem to change people actually, because I will bring everything in, and I, but I don't bring the battery in when I um, drop my kid off. I okay. just like hope that no one takes the battery. Um, but I, I swear, I'm I still see people that are l- more cavalier than me, with just leaving the stuff. So wouldn't you think if there's if the numbers are up? Maybe it's like no one's stealing a cargo bike at that moment, mm. but they're taking like this other bike to get home or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, so, okay, so we're, we're victim <laughs> blaming. No, nobody's no, saying like, like the trust, the Danish trust thing is still very yeah. strong. Yeah. Like where they're like, we know that these things can get stolen and that's just going to happen, but I'm still just going to leave it here without sure. locking it up. And that's what I meant. Not I feel like, like it's a big thing. Like, cause sometimes, you know, I've seen people at uh, a cafe. I won't name one because this is not sponsored by Espresso House, but <laughs> I may see somebody at a cafe like espresso house and just leave like their laptop on the table yeah. use the, the the toilets and then come back and mm-hmm. people sometimes do that with something bigger like a cargo bike outside especially if they're running in for something yeah, <laughs> yeah i get that yeah i mean maybe so that's, that's also maybe it will require a little behavior change as well yeah but i wouldn't want it to which is so sad because i love that people just it's like we trust that you won't take this because you're a responsible person yeah. instead of mm-hmm. So I would be sad if it changed. Yeah, but also... I'm already sad that there's going to be less nude Danes <laughs> because of people... Have, oh, that's another time. That's another topic. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, come on. I want to see where um, this is So I, I think I'd heard that nudity as like a, is changing because everyone's got phones in their I've heard hands. heard that too, yeah. And mm. whereas De- you know, Denmark of the Scandinavian countries was the most naked and yeah. of normalizing naked bodies. Sure. Just regular bodies, not yeah. sexualized or anything. And that is changing a bit because of um, the times. And that makes me sad, you yeah. know, like where uh, I just appreciated that it was um, it's a bit of prudishness from the from the U.S. and also the phone thing. So I had an interesting conversation with uh, and, and we'll have to have them on uh, uh, to sexologists, right? Like that actually study sexual, uh, sexuality and, and sex and uh, at KU. And they said exactly that, that part of it is this like. Mm, sort of hom- homogenization of culture where it sort of then gets, you know, distilled down to, oh, yeah, maybe from people moving here, but cultural influences as well 
the more Halloween here, the, the less more Halloween naked. Is like, exactly. Sad. Yeah. yeah. And, and but also the phones in the pocket thing that is kind of like it's also just the technology. The and fact there's that people, posters all over Copenhagen, at least that are like, did you ask before taking a photo? And that's, uh, I think, ge- geared more towards teens. Yeah. Um, but it's a real thing, you know, like, did you ask to take a photo of my kid? Like there was someone seven year old mm. that knew, you know, hey, mom, someone took my picture and they didn't ask me like they know from oh, an early good. age. And that's good. Yeah. You know, consent and stuff. But it's mm. um. There's a lot of different these kind of trying to fix a problem that is growing. Yeah. You know? But I actually had that the other day. It was kind of weird. My uh, It was raining in the morning and I took my, my kids to Bernahewa and they were wearing Rhine toy and gummy stole it. And of course, they're jumping in the puddles on the way there. So we're walking down the street and these two guys overtook us uh, walking. And then they looked back and were like smiling and laughing. And then one guy took out his phone and started photographing them as they're jumping in the puddles. And I'm sure it was innocent enough. But part of me thought that was a bit weird because I would never do that to someone else. Yeah, yeah. They, even if it's really cute, unless you have, unless you're doing a photo shoot with yeah. somebody's children or something, why would you start photographing yeah. their kids? I wouldn't photograph, uh, and it, you know, they have the same autonomy as an adult. Like you wouldn't just pull out your phone and start photographing some random person. Yeah. Although I say that, but actually social media is full of also mocking people, right? Like what are people wearing or how are they behaving? And it That's makes you feel true. so sad after a while. You know, even if it's done in a funny way, you know, it's still somebody's body, right? Sure. It's like, hey, look, I saw even silly one the other way. Oh, this sock and shoe combination is so ugly. Mm. And it's like, come on. I feel like that's changed in the last, and interesting guys, I feel like we're talking a lot about social media and technology in this episode, but it's true. It affects so much of our lives. But I feel in even the last decade that that's really changed where consenting to photographs and taking people's pictures without them knowing, especially posting them, has really become something that you just can't do. And there's some legal context, Mm. I'm sure. I remember early days of social media and Facebook. There was like a a group, I think it was called like People of Walmart. Yeah, I remember that. Do you know this? Faces of Walmart? Faces of Walmart, something like that. And it would just be That's what I thought of when he was talking. Yes. Yes. And remember that because that seems so, that was so normal at the time because I don't think we understood the implications of that. And Vice but Magazine, now, you know, do's and magazine, don'ts. Yeah. Like, that was yeah. hilarious at the time, yeah. but now it's like, oh, it's and kind it's, of... It's like, no, that was actually very exploitative and <laughs> super cringe to mm-hmm. do that to people that didn't know. or very, People of the subway, people of New York, there were all of these, like, sites that were basically, very much mocking without consent and taking photos of people without consent and posting them. Last night's party was one in New York. Oh, I didn't that know that. That was like a, a guy who was a photographer that was just at all the like the things to be at and so you always ended up on a website the next day and saw and like as 20 somethings out partying we were like cool like but th- there's a lot of like nudity in those and oh. like you know and, whole, like, and girls gone wild era and yeah, all of that yeah and it yeah. was like if you Speaking ended up on the website it was kind of a cool thing <laughs> like and then yeah so weird. It's yeah. like but where I feel very middle aged in my in my <laughs> thoughts about it now is like my goodness like whenever there's like a, in my day I think it, Timothy Chalamet is not a good example because I think he's a little bit older but anytime they're like look at this cute boy I'm like he could be my son mm. <laughs> like, I'm now at the age where I'm like I am technically old enough to be this person's parent so like I can't find them cute yeah. and you, if you were you would not let people take pictures of yep. Timothy on the way <laughs> yes so in conclusion get bigger locks for your bikes yes. Yes, I back guess. to the bike. <laughs> don't ride them naked. Just protect them. Don't ride them naked. How and would you? But how would you enforce this law about like? Oh, you look suspicious. Like, I mean, I'm guessing that it's also. So, I mean, there are definitely people that are you know biking in a pedestrian street and things like that. So, I'm wondering if maybe it's just starting with that, where you, if somebody's breaking a different law, you can then ask them. By the way, uh, where did you get this bike? <laughs> Like, Where would you what's say the serial about number this? on this bike? Yeah, I mean, it could. It, maybe that's. Maybe they're just doing it with that. I, it wasn't too specific. I saw uh, on TV2 News it had a compilation of uh, surveillance cameras of people stealing Lelsugel. Mm. And some of those are, I mean, really, really suspicious because you've got two guys who have hoods up, mouth coverings, and one of them's in the Christiania bike and the other one's riding it. And I mean, in a situation like, obviously, uh. that could be two friends going out, but something like that late at night. I have t- in uh, July. In July. With a ski mask on, yeah. I have a friend, I was just visiting the, them in Aarhus, and they had a Lel circle, very expensive one, like the, what's it called, Bab Boa, how do you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah, and they parked it in their basement, which is behind a security door. Obviously, you can get through that if you just wait. They went on holiday, and when they came back, it had been stolen, and they had oh. bought the most biggest expensive bolt lock. I mean, each oh ring of God. it's like this, and they, they talked to the police about it, and the police said that in order to get through that, you need a circular saw. So those guys had gone down there, mm. 
mm. with a saw, and it must have taken many minutes to actually sit in a in an underground car park and cut through that wow. log. So, That's wild. I, uh, a friend of mine in Silkeborg got her lesicle stolen actually with her laptop in it when she was dropping her kid off. Mm. And then they, the person that stole it called her a week later and was like, I'm sorry, I was in a really bad spot and I needed it. So I've left it in this parking lot, but I, it's it's not locked. So I can't guarantee it'll still be there. And then she went and it was stolen again. No. Like, it's just crazy to me that like, it, like someone stole it, had a change of heart. And then like... <laughs> Stolen again. Oh man! Oh. The th- even even the thieves are getting robbed. <laughs> it's awful. Wow. Take the bus. Take now, the I bus. wonder if that counts. Insure your bike. Maybe that's yeah. the increase from the thirty-eight thousand to the forty-eight thousand. Mm. <laughs> Do we count a lad sickle as two it, bikes? Does it count yeah. if we're stealing the same bike twice? Yeah, from maybe two that's different people? It. Oh my god. Jeez. Okay, we need we need clarification on that. You should walk and chain your shoes to your ankles. That's the only solution. That's the only way to get anywhere <laughs> safely without being robbed. Well, okay, so hopefully that will cheer you up and make you feel better <laughs> about the Im- Im- implications of all of the other news going on outside of Denmark this week. But <laughs> I feel like we covered a good span. We did, yeah. So we got <laughs> Still don't know what the supercomputer does. We're going to find out. Drugs, mm-hmm. bikes, supercomputers, and... Um, influencer, uh, influencer. Where's my bike? That'll be my first question for the supercomputer. <laughs> Where's my bike? Hashtag reclaim it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, new, a new app that will help you find your bike. <laughs> Well, uh, stay safe, everybody. <laughs> uh, don't steal any bikes and um, hide your drug use carefully. <laughs> hi, hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs>